Hey, what's up? Eli here. I'm super excited to have you tuning in and listening to this audiobook kind of recording. What I'm going to be talking about is basically my full e-commerce journey from how I got started in e-commerce, how I kind of came across it, um, how I got into it, how I started making sales. And you guys are going to get a little bit more uh, access into some of the trials and tribulations that I faced getting into e-commerce when I first got started. So again, this is just an audiobook kind of uh, narrated version. I'm just, I typed it all out. I posted it in the private student mastermind group the other day and it got a lot of love and a lot of feedback and I'm guessing a lot of people haven't read through the entire thing um, because it is rather long so instead of you know sitting there and having to scroll on your phone I decided I'd make a kind of podcast or audiobook version so that those of you on the go uh, you can chuck this in your headphones while you're at the gym or while you're on you know public transport or driving on your car or or at work whatever you're doing you guys can tune in so let me jump straight into it and uh, read through it all with you so you guys can get an understanding of where I came from what I've been doing and how I got into e-commerce sound good? So sit down with a beverage and a snack because there's a lot to unpack here with me right now. I'm going to be sharing with you my full e-commerce story behind how I got to where I am now, starting with nothing just years ago. I'm going to be giving you the juicy details that I usually gloss over because I, most people, honestly, they lack any sort of attention span. But here you are listening and taking that initiative. So pat yourself on the back because most people won't even open this out there. Um, and it's only going to be a select few people who actually want to learn and they have the aspirations and they have you know, the work ethic to be able to listen to this and apply the lessons that they learned from this as well. So listening to this is going to be very worth it and I know your most valuable currency is your time so I'm not going to waste it and I'm going to dive straight into it for you. I hope you enjoy listening about my struggles and my achievements and my journey. I know you're going to be learning a lot here with me and you're going to be inspired to go out there and achieve your dreams too and overcome any obstacles that might be in your way. Now, many of you are familiar with my story to some extent, but many of you are not intimately aware of the many trials, tribulations, all the bullshit that I've had to face to get to where I am right now in 2022. Now, over on my Instagram profile, I have many people that don't really know me yet. They just come across my profile or a friend might share a photo to them or something. They come over and they message me, you know, these typical questions like, Eli, how did you get to where you are now? Or do you just leech off your rich parents or something like that? You look like you don't do really anything. You just live this lavish lifestyle. Where did you find money to start your businesses? How did you start a business? How do you do this? What's e-commerce? How do I do what you do making money from a laptop? And then I get questions like, did your parents buy you that new C63S AMG Mercedes Benz? And all of these types of questions, right? I'm sure you guys can only imagine some of the types of questions that I get given. I get so many inquiries constantly about how I got into the game um, and sit tight because I'm going to be getting right into it for you and giving you all the dirty details. Now, for those of you who did see this in the private Facebook mastermind group, I did attach a bunch of photos and everything kind of showcasing visual elements to support uh, everything that I say in this kind of story so you guys can follow along in in more of a visual form as well because I know a lot of you guys like to picture it, visual learners and obviously like audible learners as well. So too long, didn't read or didn't listen version. I started e-commerce many years ago and through great perseverance and overcoming obstacles, I've learned a lot over the journey and I've made a bunch of money and I've helped so many of you listening uh, make a bunch of money as well. So that really fills my cup up and gets me very, very excited about the future for all of us. So this is just a story of my journey summarized as short, sharp, and concise as possible while still giving you all of the necessary gory details so that you know that success is indeed a journey and not a destination. And it's truly my mission to help all of you accomplish your idea of success too, whatever that may be. So it's time to set the story straight and answer one of the more common questions I'm asked of how I got to where I am now. Okay, let's dive right in. Let me set the scene. It was the middle of 2016 when I first started my very first online store in the e-commerce space, right? Middle of 2016. My internationally recognized watch brand, Elmore Lewis, which since starting has now sold thousands and thousands of watches to over 24 different countries, was started in June 2016 when I was just 17 years old, still in high school, funnily enough. I'm not gonna break down the entirety of my life and my childhood like an autobiography, maybe at a later date. (laughs) This is simply going to explain my journey with e-commerce commerce and the opportunities that it has provided me with. Here's a little bit of a backstory as to how I got into this business model and how it got me to where I am now as a millionaire at just 23 years old, right? Ever since I earned my first dollar from my little SEO marketing agency that I started when I was like around 13 years old, I remember that I loved watches, right? I vividly remember the first deal that I ever closed when I was about 13 was for about a thousand dollars to optimize my dad's friend website SEO optimization. So my dad's friend kind of runs a disability kind of business that gives people equipment who are disabled. Um, and obviously he wanted to be showing up 
you know, higher in the search rankings on Google. So I went out there and proposed a way to help him with it as well. So that's kind of how I first made money online, or at least a significant sum, right, when I was about 13 years old. So how it came about was I was discussing with my dad's friend about his business, because obviously I was really interested in business. I was getting started in it. I was reading all the books. I was seeing all the guys online with the fast cars and things like that. And so I went online and I actually checked it out after we spoke briefly, and I couldn't find his website easily as he was talking about. So I low-key pitched my services, even though I didn't really have any clients yet and he accepted my very casual proposal um, I don't know if, if he sounded if he thought that I was you know competent for my age or if he thought oh these younger kids they know their way around the internet I don't know what sold the deal because really I didn't have any case studies or anything um, and I was just like oh yeah I could probably help you get your website ranking higher so I went and did some basic research and that's kind of how I started my little marketing agency at a very young age as well again I had no help no one in my family has ever run a business or managed a business so this was totally new to me so I ended up yeah, closing that sale for about $1,000. So immediately after I'd made what was the easiest $1,000 of my life at the time, I went out and as a little reward, I bought myself this large tacky Nixon 4820 watch in gold, right? It's just some tacky watch. It's like a few hundred bucks, right? Super cringe in hindsight, but you know it's probably one of the ugliest watches I've ever seen. But for some reason at the time, it looked really brilliant to me and it was like a goal and I had to have it. I'd seen probably an influencer or someone else wear it and I was like, I want that. So I got it and it felt great, you know, earning that money and delivering a good service to, you know, my dad's friend and his business, getting them the results that he wanted, helping him out. And then I got paid and then I went and, you know, treated myself as a young kid who had no financial discipline, right? At the same time though, I got that watch and, you know, I wore it to school and I was pretty proud of it, but I actually started to get bullied for trying to look rich when I indeed was not rich and my family was not rich as well. So I obviously was trying to, you know, look the part or fake it till I made it. I just wanted acceptance from kids at school more so I'd, I'd say at the time. Um, which is kind of funny looking back at it now knowing how far I've come since then and how you know much more I've matured since then as well but yeah that was that was funny uh, that's how I kind of started making money online and I made that first you know close and uh, I wanted and treated myself to something rather cringeworthy but the point being I liked watches and that's where I spent my first dollars that I made online right now the next time I spent my first paycheck on a watch was when I got my part-time telemarketing job when I was just 16 years old I don't even think the people that hired me in Adelaide for this telemarketing job. I don't even think that they knew that I was as young as 16 because there was no other kids doing this job. It was all people uh, at least the age of 18, like probably mid 20s to late 20s and even 30s and 40 year olds coming in to do the telemarketing job. So I just found it uh, interesting. I didn't want to do, you know, the typical job of, you know, fast food or whatever it is that, you know, retail, most kids who are getting into the workforce start doing. I was like, it's not really me. I really wanted to try something different and and build some skills that would take me further. Um, and the reason I got into telemarketing was I'd heard on the internet after researching some good like part-time jobs that you definitely learn very, very quickly about rejection. Um, and that was something that I kind of wanted to overcome my fear of rejection. So I got into the telemarketing game, basically where you call people up and you get told to fuck off all day, every day. So it's quite... <laughs> It's quite good for building up a bit of thick skin, I guess. But yeah, so I ended up spending my first paycheck from that job on another watch. This time I didn't buy a big tacky gold watch. I'd matured a little bit in those last few years, but instead I purchased a much classier silver and navy citizen quartz watch. Now I didn't get bullied for wearing this one to school as much. However, I, can say, I can't say the same regarding that Nixon watch as well. Anyway, now you know how much I was into watches growing up all throughout my journey into entrepreneurship and even into part-time normal work. Um, I was very into watches and what they meant to me was a symbol of achieving my goals and earning things and it was just kind of you know a piece of jewelry that I could see all day every day I could wear it and it was just a reminder that you know I've earned it and it was kind of just you know at that age I couldn't have cars I couldn't have anything else and I definitely didn't have the money at that time to go out there and buy cars and do all of that it was just kind of an affordable goal so that's kind of what I got into watches and I really liked watches I researched watches and I invest a lot of my time into seeing what other watch brands were out there I definitely had visions of one day owning a Rolex or an AP or a Patek. Um, it's crazy to think that now I own an AP or Iced Out. You guys have probably seen it on Instagram. But the point being, I've had a massive passion, right? And if you know me well at this point as well, perhaps you've been a student for a while now or you know me on a personal level, you know that I definitely love being creative and I love designing things. So starting a watch brand for me eventually was just a natural progression of all of that, you know, mixed together, I guess. So might I also add that my first word as a child was actually clock. So I guess there were many patterns emerging as a child that kind of pushed me to begin a watch brand, right? I remember when I told my parents I wanted to start my own watch brand and my mum instantly reminded me that clock was my first word, which I found pretty funny. So back when I first started e-commerce in the 
middle of 2016, the first thing I did was had to think of a name for this watch brand that I wanted to go out there and build. Again, I got into it because I saw so many other people making money and I was like, you know what? If these guys can all go out there and make money, I definitely can go out there and take a slice of the market and uh, make some money as well. So again, I had to go out there and think of a name. And I also had no idea what the actual process of starting an e-commerce business really entailed because no one was helping me. I was alone, so I strapped myself in for what was definitely going to be a crazy ride. I had no expectations. I was just going to give it my best and see what came of it. Now, thinking of a store name was rather difficult for my first time starting a brand like this. Naturally, I wanted it to sound kind of classy and elegant, yet also premium for the kind of brand that I wanted to portray to the world with this business, right? So after stewing over the name for a few days and putting my pen to paper and screwing up many pieces of paper and throwing them in the bin, I finally decided on the brand name I was going to choose at the time, which was Elmore Lewis. Elmore Lewis, right? For those who don't already know, the name is a culmination of both mine and my father's middle names. Mine is Elmore, his is Lewis. It clicked, it sounded good, and I just ran with it from there, right? I just wanted to get the naming thing out of the way, move on to the, the brand design and the products and everything like that, okay? Immediately, the people that I told about my new brand idea, they loved the name, they thought it sounded cool. So I was like, all right, cool, I could be onto something here. So I kept progressing forwards. The next step I decided I had to do was prove that there was a viable opportunity in the market for this business of mine. I've condensed the learning curve that I had to go through for the purpose of keeping this kind of story short and enjoyable. It's definitely a lot harder than what I'm just saying here in this uh, in this audio recording and in, in, in the post as well because it would be stupidly long, but I've definitely condensed it. But I went ahead and uh, started to look at the viability of this, right? So I went and found all these top competitors that were doing millions, tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars online a year. And that made me think to myself, well, if I could just be 1% as good as them, that's going to totally change my life. And it's true. If you go out there and you find a top online store in a particular niche doing like $100 million a year in sales, all you need to do is be 99% dumber than them and you're a millionaire. Think about it. If you find a brand that's making $100 million a year, right, you can afford to be 99% dumber than what they've been able to put together and you can make a million dollars a year. That's how I think of it. Instead of trying to stretch and be like, oh, I would never be able to make $100 million, which is what most people think of when they first get into business because it seems like such a high ask, like a huge order, right? I just think, well, you know, if they can do that, I can definitely be more than 1% as smart as them. Therefore, I can go out there and see results as well. So that's kind of my mindset behind it as well, which I encourage you guys to keep a similar mindset in order to follow your dreams as well. So just remember, just being 1% as smart as someone else can change your life and it will if you apply yourself, right? It's an interesting way of thinking about it. So after determining who the top competitors in the market were, I asked myself, Eli, how are you going to differentiate yourself in the market to make people want to buy your watches over the other available brands out there? So this is a great question to always ask yourself when launching a new business. How are you going to go out there and differentiate yourself? And that's what we talk about a lot in the V3 program of the Six Figure Brand Accelerator, right? So I'm really excited for you guys to go ahead and get into that where we talk about everything, uh, finding your USP, your unique selling proposition, your unique selling points, and how to go out there and entice customers to buy, right? So definitely consider that. So with that being said, after determining what was going to separate my brand in a somewhat crowded market, I did a lot of research, I did a lot of thinking, and I put a few things together. I decided to move onwards to the next step. I needed to get these ideas, these product designs in my head on paper and made real. Now, this was a difficult task for me being a literal child, like an underage child, and not having anyone around me to help help me with this at all. I was alone and I was trying to figure things out, but I was figuring them out the hard way. Luckily, you know, you guys learning off of me, you have it the easier way, right? You get to shortcut your learning curve and you don't have to go through the same headaches that I've been through, right? So here's basically how my design process went down. Step one, I found 15 to 20 of the top selling watches from a variety of brands on their Shopify stores. Step two, I printed them out. I looked at them. I started drawing on them, adding things, erasing things, playing with the designs, what I liked, what I didn't like. Step three, I specified the product details. For example, the size of them, the weight, the length, the specs. I kind of just started putting more tangible things down with the design so I could see how it's going to come out and uh, what I'd be you know, translating and, and giving to the supplier in order to make these visions of mine a reality, right? Step four, I had to figure out what I wanted my designs to look like on paper. And step five, I then went into a simple image editing program on my computer and made some effect pictures, which are basically just like mock-ups, showing people, showing the suppliers, showing the designers what I'd envisioned for my products, right? And that brings us to step six. So I completed a final render and my design was officially ready to start getting manufactured, which is pretty exciting. So at this stage, once I had my niche selected, brand name and logo was done, point of difference identified and my product designs created, it was time to turn them into a real functional product that I could then start selling to customers. 
I ended up locating a top tier watch manufacturer based overseas through a popular wholesale website and we discussed the possibility of them manufacturing my watches for Elmore Lewis. We negotiated on pricing and terms for a few weeks. Again, I was totally new to this and I didn't have the money so I was working part time to save up the money. And then finally, after a bit of negotiating with these people, I settled on a final deal with the supplier. What, how it was, was I was going to pay 30% of the wholesale order up front for them to commence work and then they were going to um, receive the remaining 70% upon them completing the bulk order of my watches, right? So that's how the deal was structured. And that's typically how I advise you guys to go out there and do it as well. Uh, when you're getting bulk orders made, pay a little bit up front and then pay the rest on completion and uh, make sure it's quality checked as well. So I cover this all inside the program as well, but that's pretty much how we structured it. So once I'd paid the suppliers some money that I'd saved from my part-time job when I was 16, I decided, you know what? It was time to get working on the website now. I've got that being made. I need to go out there and build the vision and build the brand for this thing, right? So to build my online store, again, I used a platform called Shopify. You should all be familiar with it. It basically allows anybody, regardless of your tech skills or age, to jump on and build a simple online store, allowing you to collect payments and sell your products, right? So as the manufacturer was creating my first order of watches and keeping me updated of their progress along the way, I was slowly putting together at the same time my online store. I'm a perfectionist, so when it came to really optimizing the website to try and look as professional as possible, I was never really totally satisfied. I would keep tweaking things and I'd be like, oh, that's not perfect. Oh, I need to change this, which is good. It's, you know, it can be a blessing and a curse, right? Being a perfectionist when building brands like this can be both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it allows for great attention to detail. However, However, obviously on the flip side, it can also result in not progressing forwards due to just being hyper-focused on one small part of the process and getting you know annoyed, a bit OCD over it. Um, and that can also hold you back from just taking action. And I know so many of you guys are perfectionists as well. Um, but yeah, it's obviously, it's something you just gotta get the, the most minimal viable product out there and uh, start selling, okay? So you know, if you sit there and just analyze everything and don't do anything, you're gonna be you know in a state of stagnation where you aren't moving forward and you're spinning your wheels, right? So I I've kind of learned to try and meet myself in the middle with being a perfectionist and continuing to move forward in the process while still maintaining that high attention to detail still, which is important to me and my brands. Regardless, a couple months later when my first bulk order of watches arrived at my doorstep, I nervously opened my packaging and inspected one of the watches for the first time. I was pretty happy with their quality and they were actually ready to go out there and flood the market now. I was excited, I was like, you know what, I've got my bulk order, now I gotta go out there and start selling these things, right? So this was around July of 2016 at this point, late July, right? To summarize where I was at now, I had my brand name, my logo, my products, and my website all ready to go, or at least, you know, as ready to go as they could be at the time, knowing my skill level and what I knew at the time, right? All I needed now was to go out there, start selling these watches and make some money. Now, what I hadn't really taken into account when I first started was how I was actually going to build out my brand awareness and get people actually, you know, purchasing off of my website as opposed to my competitors' websites, right? How was I going to go out there and you know, get my message out to the world for my brand and have people buy from me as opposed to my competitors because you guys will also face the same struggles inside of your own business, right? You've got to, you know, clearly articulate your point of difference and put it out there to the world, use advertising, right? So the missing element for me at the time was marketing and having a solid advertising strategy to build that awareness, right? So what did I do from there? Honestly, I didn't really have any idea. So I just went and studied what the other top online stores were doing at the time. And I discovered that the reason they were all so highly profitable and successful was due to running social media marketing campaigns and ad campaigns and using influencers, all of these things, right? You know those ads that come up while you're scrolling Facebook? Yeah, those ads are responsible for the creation of a huge number of multi-million dollar online stores. So naturally, I figured this out and I had to go out there and reverse engineer how they were doing it so I could run these kind of ads for my store, get traffic and get sales coming in too, right? After briefly playing around with my Facebook ads and setting them up with some simple photos of the watches that my friend and I took at a park um, and down you know, the local uh, Glenelg jetty, basically, I ended up setting up my first ad campaign with a bunch of these kind of amateurish, like we call them now UGC, user-generated content style ads. But at the time it was just pretty amateurish. Um, that was back when like professional content did work well. Um, but now it's like people love buying off of, you know, brands that are more native and organic and seem more authentic. That's why UGC content works exceptionally well. So I went out there, I got my products, I took some uh, photos and little videos of my friend on our phones and on some cameras as well. And then I launched my first Facebook ad campaign. Now the beauty of Facebook ads, as if you don't already know, is that you can begin with whatever budget you kind of like, right? If you've got $2 a day or $3 a day or a hundred bucks a day or $10,000 a day, whatever it is you want to spend, you can go out there and budget it, right? 
It can be huge if you want to reach a wide audience or if you were like me at the time, you were kind of poor on a budget and you wanted to start out small and scale up and snowball your profits, you can do that as well. When I started, I began with literally just $5 a day in ad spend, which is the equivalent to you know a cup of coffee effectively. Super cheap budget. I started with that um, as that was pretty much all I could afford, you know, being in high school, um, having just spent a lot of my money on buying these all these you know watches in bulk up front and then having to obviously you know pay for the hard costs along the way and then having other costs and not earning a lot of money doing a part-time job as well, right? So I started with my $5 a day in budget. When you look at it like that, you know, it's just a cup of coffee. It's extremely affordable considering you're able to get your offer in front of thousands of potential buyers for the price of a coffee, right? I thought it was awesome. I loved the idea. I loved the idea that I could spend such a little amount of money and potentially make a return, right? I thought that this would turn on the tap of sales. I thought I would open up the floodgates to orders just coming into my store and that I'd be a millionaire or at least a lot richer very quickly. Uh, And I ran some projections of what I'd like to have done in terms of sales revenue, but it didn't quite work like that, right? I turned on my ad and expected sales to flood in. It didn't work like that. I turned the ads on and my budget started to spend. Days went past, no sales. A couple of weeks went past, still no sales. Everyone at school was starting to see what I was doing and the fact that I wasn't making any money and they began poking fun at my idea saying it was stupid and it wouldn't work and that no one would buy my products as they suspected. Um, they pretty much were just bullying me, for, you know, making fun at me. At a, I remember I went to a party once and I turned up to the party and they're like, oh, it's Mr. Elmore Lewis. And that was when I hadn't even like really told anyone. They just found it somehow through my Instagram and I was like, oh, here we go. I started just getting, you know, a lot of shit thrown at me and it just felt really bad and I was just, you know, obviously in a, in a pretty down mood at the time because I wasn't making sales. I was running, you know, my little ads. I'd done all this work. I'd spent all this money and I was, you know, copying shit at school and at parties for it. And it just, it didn't feel good at the time. So that was a definitely, you know, it added fuel to my fire of wanting to prove them wrong, right? So it started to become apparent that I obviously didn't have what it takes to start a successful online store that all of these other brands like Gymshark, High Smile, Kylie Cosmetics, Fashion Over, MVMT Watches, and Daniel Wellington. That's kind of how I thought at the time. I was like, oh, I mean, I'm I'm motivated. I want it to work, but clearly I just don't have what it takes, right? If I'm not making sales each morning, as soon as I woke up, I'd roll over in my bed. I'd pick up my phone. I'd turn it on and I'd excitedly check my notifications to see if I'd made a sale. Every day that went by without a sale was really putting me in a poor mood and turning me off the whole idea and almost making me have second thoughts about even getting into e-commerce at the time, which is crazy to see you know, how far I've come since then. But I'd wake up, check my phone, no sales, and it would hurt my feelings, literally. So this continued until about a week later when just like every other morning, I got up, woke up, rolled over, checked my phone, looked for sales, right? Today, August 20, 2016, I'd finally made a sale. I was so excited that it was actually working, that something worked, that someone made a purchase. The notification on my phone read the following, Shopify, Elmore Lewis has a new order for one product totaling $179. I I didn't even know how to feel or what to say. It was like Christmas had come early, seeing that first sale come in in 2016. It was honestly such an adrenaline rush. My smile was frozen to my face for what felt like hours. I'd done it. I actually made money online on, how would you say, autopilot, right? I'm telling you right now, coffee can't wake you up half as much as making your first dollars online. Now, for those of you who've made your first sale, you know the feeling. You can probably remember that first sale, that first time you saw a sale come up on your Shopify dashboard. And for those of you who are doing like 10, 20, 30K a month, 50K a month, 100K a month, some of you doing, you know, 30, 50K a day, you know who you are. Um, You know, it's a crazy feeling when you make that first sale because it just opens up that huge realm of possibilities as to what you can achieve and how much money you can make at scale, right? Literally, while I was fast asleep, some random stranger was on their phone, probably on Facebook, trying to look at cat pictures or videos of Taylor Swift or whatever they're trying to look at. They saw my Facebook ad of my watch that I'd filmed with my friend, you know, <laughs> at a public park. They've, they've clicked over to my website and they decided to actually purchase a watch from my store. Remember, this all happened without me ever having to pick up the phone to sell anything or stand in a retail store harassing customers, trying to pressure anyone to buy anything. It all happened automatically. It was the closest thing to true passive income that I'd ever seen and experienced. It was crazy. 
And this was honestly a turning point for me as well. And it gave me that extra push that I needed to keep going again. And you're gonna notice a constant theme throughout my story here as we're just getting into the thick of it. I just needed these constant pushes. And you know, just as I, I'm almost about to give up, something in the universe keeps me pushing along and keeps me going. And I'm very thankful for all the trials and tribulations it was as well. So stay tuned and uh, we're gonna get into a lot more of the juicy stuff, okay? So after I'd made that first sale, I finally proved to myself without a shadow of a doubt that this e-commerce business model was real and I was going to make some money. I just had to stick with it until I was successful, right? So coming into the tail end of 2016 now, my business was slowly ticking along, getting some steady-ish sales revenue coming in, you know, every day, every week. I was probably making about 500 to 1500 bucks a week from my watch brand at this point, which to me was absolutely amazing considering that I was making, you know, only a few hundred bucks a week prior, like prior to that in my telemarketing job. And what this allowed for me was it allowed me some kind of time freedom aside from school, location freedom aside from school, and a tiny taste of that financial independence that I'd never had before and never seen anyone in my life have as well, which was super, super motivating for me. Every day that would go by, the more obsessed I became over the insanely massive potential of the e-commerce business model and what I could achieve if I actually cracked the code properly and start making things really work. I would think to myself every time a sale would come in, selling these products online like this, who knew that this would be my ticket to financial freedom when I thought that I'd have to be dealing with, you know, clients and agency stuff. And, you know, prior to that, I actually wanted to get into filmmaking. So obviously you've got to go out there and produce and create these really elaborate films. And it's, a, you know, so much effort, so much logistics, whereas you could just put web, like a website together with a product on it get some traffic to it and it would generate sales. To me, that was crazy, it was leverage, right? Now, everything was going fairly smoothly for a little while, you know, these sales were coming in until I became somewhat complacent with what I was doing. Once again, I got I got stuck in that comfort zone that so many of us find ourselves trapped in often, right? We see some sales or we see come some kind of, um, you know, success in our lives and we just get stuck in that comfort zone and we get complacent, right? So what happens? Have a guess. The universe came along and humbled me right back to square one. You're probably asking yourself right now, what do you mean back to square one? What do you mean the universe came along and kicked your ass back to square one, right? Here's where the financial and emotional roller coaster really starts for me, all right? In the beginning of 2017, I was cruising along, you know, making sales, earning a little bit of money, as I just said. All of a sudden, one of these days when I'm, you know, checking on my sales and everything, I open up my Shopify dashboard and there's a notification that I'd received a chargeback, right? Oh no, was my obvious response to that. Oh no. A chargeback for those who are unfamiliar is essentially when a customer purchases something online through your Shopify store. Um, the business, me in this case, ships an item to the customer and then the customer calls their bank and claims that they didn't authorize the purchase on their card. This results in the bank taking the money back and it's very scummy and low life behavior for people who are doing this, right? Every time this happens, what it means for me is that I lose the watch that I sent to that customer, I lose the postage fees I paid, I lose all the money that the customer paid for that, the merchant fees, and the payment processor charged me another $25 chargeback fee on top of that. It's a horrible feeling to get a chargeback and you're actually going backwards in your bank account every time that happens, right? For example, on this first chargeback that happened, I lost over $100 negative on top of losing the money that I thought I'd made, which was crazy. I had no idea what all of this meant at the time after I got that first chargeback, but I didn't like the idea of the chargeback. It annoyed me. It felt personal at the time. Um, and I, I had no idea what was to come, right? I had no idea what all of this was going to mean very, very soon. And look, one chargeback is fine in the grand scheme of things in online business. You know, a few chargebacks here and there, if you're processing lots of orders, it's natural. Not everyone might love your product and there might be people committing fraud out there and all these other different things, um, you know, and, and you know, your online store might be a victim to chargebacks. It's just a common thing in e-commerce and online business, but you obviously have different ways to mitigate your risk on that and make sure, you know, that you're not, you know, fulfilling uh, fraudulent orders that are going to result in chargebacks. But I actually did back then because I didn't know what was going on. I had no one to help me. Um, so yeah, I would literally just sit there and as a chargeback comes along, I'd just kind of, you know, reassure myself. I'd say, well, you can't please everyone. I did my best as I took this one on the chin and I kind of moved on. Right. And I, in my eyes, I was like, you know what, that, that person probably just didn't like the watch for whatever reason. And they decided instead of communicating, they would just get a chargeback, whatever it is, what it is. I'll move forward and keep, you know, running my business. All of a sudden the next morning I rolled out of bed again, checked my phone as I do. And to my horror, another chargeback. Right Later that day, I go back on another chargeback. At this point, I was actually starting to get stressed. I was easily agitated. And as you can imagine by now, I was losing money out of my bank account every time this occurred. 
I was literally scared to wake up in the morning and check my sales dashboard due to being scared of seeing new chargebacks just appear and I'd be losing money, right? The next day I got up, checked again, another chargeback, go to sleep, wake up, you guessed it, a new chargeback was opened. For fuck's sakes, I always exclaimed, sorry for the language, but that was just honest. For fuck's sakes, I would say and, and think in my head along with many other profanities, no doubt. <laughs> a few weeks go by from this point now, right? I'm still, saying, um, I'm still selling like the occasional watch. However, I'm actually losing money at the end of the day due to all these chargebacks. So essentially, I was spending money on advertising and sending out products just to lose more money. This has to stop and it has to stop now, I said to myself as this issue was slowly diminishing my savings account and my will to live at the time. I was like, oh no, this is not what I needed. You're probably thinking to yourself now, Eli, why are you getting all these chargebacks? Surely not all of your customers were pissed off with what you were delivering. Fair question, that's what I asked myself as well. But as it turns out, it wasn't just a simple case of a few unhappy customers or whatever it is when you're running any kind of business or e-commerce business, right? It was much deeper and it was far more sinister than that. So I started doing some more research and began investigating the issue. In fact, what I came across and what I found out was the fact that criminals were making fraudulent purchases on stolen credit cards, right? Suspiciously, all of these chargebacks had something in common. They were coming from a few different customers in South Africa. So I decided to do some Google searching at this point in a futile attempt to get to the bottom of all of this and figure out a solution. As a result, I discovered that South Africa actually has a very high rate of online fraud in comparison to other Western countries, which was, you know, just my luck. I thought, wow, all my ads are doing really well in South Africa because I was looking at like, um, the reason I started advertising to South Africa was, was because I was doing research on um, what countries had the most like developing e-commerce markets at the time. And I was like, oh, well, I don't, I don't know if any of these other brands are tapping into South Africa. And unfortunately, I learned the hard way that there's a reason why people aren't really tapping into South Africa was because there's a lot of fraud and a lot of, you know, scams that are they're victimizing online stores, right? So I'm just losing money hand over fist to this, you know, whatever is going on with all of these. Uh, South African chargebackers or whatever they are. So my theory at the time was that there must have been a vast network of scammers in like Johannesburg and Cape Town all working together because that was where the orders were coming from. And they were probably doing this with a lot of different online stores. Once they found out that I was sending products to them and they were getting away with using these stolen credit cards or whatever they were doing, they decided to probably scale up their operation and buy watches from me every few days under different names, a variety of dresses and stolen credit cards, or maybe even their own credit cards. And then they would just charge it back, take the goods and sell it out or do whatever they were going to do right so pretty shitty deal for me i definitely drew the short straw on that one while those guys were just taking advantage of me at every possible angle doing whatever fraud they were doing so what ultimately ended up happening from this entire ordeal is that i very quickly sunk to a few thousand dollars in debt with shopify that's right i didn't go down to zero in my account right i went into debt with shopify owing all of this money for chargebacks that i couldn't repay because i was still i was still trying to grow this business and i was investing money in advertising i was still stupidly i'd sent all of those watches out. So I'd lost money in stock. I'd lost money on postage every time because sending things to South Africa isn't cheap and it's not easy. Um, so I was going through all of this just to end up losing money, right? My parents were obviously unable to bail me out. So it was totally on me and I needed to figure out a way to fix it, right? As I was still advertising to try and make these sales to cover my debt, it was kind of a weird hamster wheel. I'd also racked up an overdue overdue bill from Facebook ads as well, meaning that I actually couldn't start advertising, right? Things started to look pretty bleak for me at this point and I was losing hope again, right? I was now thousands of dollars in the hole, out of advertising budget. Facebook had banned me from running ads because I wasn't paying my you know, bill. And quite frankly, I was actually out of spirit at that point. I was very stressed and I was so unsure of what to do next, right? This e-commerce business model that had once welcomed me in with open arms, making me, you know, 500 to 1500 bucks a week. It's given me a beautiful taste of the beautiful laptop lifestyle. It helped me to make a full-time income. It had chewed me up and it spat me right back on the curb again where I started, right? I went from making sales and feeling like I'd had something going where I like, you know, I thought I'd cracked the code temporarily and I was sitting there in debt worse off than when I started, right? It was crazy. It felt horrible, right? It actually resulted in me being worse off than before I even had the idea to start the business, which sucks, but it is what it is and we all learn lessons from that. 
every day, and this is one of the worst parts about this situation that I found myself in after this, a debt collector, like recovery specialist or whatever she's called from Shopify. Her name was Stephanie. So this debt collecting recovery specialist called Stephanie would basically call me up and she would harass my phone number and email demanding that I pay them back what I owed in full immediately. So after a week or two, I finally grew some balls and actually picked up the phone because I was just trying to avoid this. I was like, oh, I have no idea what to do. This is stressing me out. I'm in school. I've got like, you know, things to worry about. I've got all these things to do. Ah. So I actually like picked up the phone after, you know, the last time I hung up and got scared because I had no idea what to do. It's very terrifying. Um, and I said to her, I'm like, Stephanie, please bear with me. This was so unexpected. It's not my fault. And it's left me completely broke. I know what's going on. People are charging back. They're doing fraud, whatever, whatever. Please give me some time to make this money back for you. Please be patient. I will do whatever I can to sort this out, but please understand my circumstances. So I was basically just chatting with the Stephanie uh, debt recovery specialist from Shopify, trying to get her to understand the situation that I found myself in and letting her know that I'm not trying to, you know, pull a fast one on them. I was just, you know, found myself in a really rough situation at the time, right? In response to what I said, you know, she was probably actually surprised that I finally picked up the phone again. And she retorted back with, Eli, you need to pay this debt to us soon or we're going to have to resort to legal action to recoup what you owe for your chargebacks. I'm sorry that you're in, the, in this position and I understand, but the law is the law and our policies are our policies, okay? So please sort this out. So that's what Stephanie said to me. And at that point, you know, when legal threats are coming along, my stomach dropped my mouth went dry and I gulped, right? How could everything be coming along so nicely and so well one minute and then within the span of just several days, I'm now in debt up to my eyeballs at the point and getting threatened with legal action. How can you go from making money pretty much passively every day, every week to being you know, in debt with legal action being threatened against you, with debt collectors harassing you while in high school. That was not the position that I'd envisioned myself being in, right? The pressure was definitely building and there was uh, there was a clear weight on my shoulders, right? It was holding me down. It was making me feel lethargic and almost defeated. I remembered someone once said, pressure creates diamonds, right? And I definitely use this saying still, but wow, was I feeling anything but like a diamond during that period of my life. I just felt the pressure, no diamonds, right? I remember being on the verge of tears that night after I spoke to you know Stephanie and she threatened me with legal action. I sat awake in my bed. I was stressed. I had no idea what I was going to do. I was almost stressed to the point of tearing my hair out. I had heart pains. I had anxiety. I was sitting there. I just had absolutely no idea what to do. I found myself in you know this position where I wanted to make sales. I wanted to keep doing the business, but I didn't have the capital to reinvest to pay off these debts so that I could keep running the business. I had, I had no idea what to do, right? So shortly after this, uh, my Shopify subscription ran out because I couldn't pay for that. I didn't even have the ability to go out there and try to get you know orders coming in organically by using Facebook Marketplace or messaging people. I didn't have any of these abilities at the point as well. I wasn't sure what to do. I couldn't use anything. My store was down, right? So we're a couple months into 2017 now and my e-com business that once lined my pockets effectively was now dead in the water. My website was down. My bank account was back to zero. I had negative thousands of dollars in debt still owing to Shopify and Facebook. And I was yet to figure out a plan as to how I was going to recover from this horrible mess. It was a real bad situation. I panicked and I thought about having to go out there and get a normal nine to five job, which was at the end of the day, a totally reasonable option for me to get some money coming in. You know, I definitely have to be trading more time for money, but you know, when your back's up against the wall, you don't really have a lot of options. You don't have a lot of choices. You just have to do what you need to do to get, you know, the problems out of the way, right? However, I knew that I'd been able to make money for myself before, you know, like those marketing agencies and doing freelance videography and content creation, doing a bit of this on the side, right? I knew I could go out there and make money for myself, you know, because I've done it before. So there should be nothing stopping me from doing it again. I knew I had a good mindset. I knew I had a good head on my shoulders. I knew I had, you know, pure intentions and I just needed to go out there and reset and then figure it all out and come back and address the problem later. So from there, I started doing some freelance photography and some videography work for brands to go out there and try and get some money coming in so I could pay off this debt and move forward. So I started hustling on this new venture very hard to try and get myself out of this mess. I was going out there trying to get clients and trying to get them to pay me like high ticket sums for me to create content for their brands. I quickly, after you know doing a bit of hustling, a bit of cold emailing, a bit of outreach, um, a bit of showing my portfolio to people and asking if I could do any work for them or whatever, I quickly landed my first paying client for $1,250 from an 
Adelaide-based beverage brand. It was in kombucha. And then I got another job from a jewelry company for about $1,750 as well. So I quickly made a few thousand dollars there. A few more jobs later doing content creation for brands and I'd saved some money together. Finally, I started to feel like a little bit more positive about my life and my you know career or whatever. I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel in a way. So just in a couple months after that, I'd finally been able to go out there and make enough money, save enough money to clear up this debt with Shopify and pay my Facebook ads bill. And it definitely, as soon as I hit pay on that Facebook ads account bill, it felt like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders, of course, right? Because I wasn't up to my eyeballs in debt. So once I got myself out of this hole, it felt so good. I was finally at peace again, besides the nagging feeling, knowing that I gave up on myself and that's not me, right? And many of you listening to this right now, you might be finding yourself in situations where you're about to give up on yourself, but just know that's not you. Right? If you're still listening to this 40 odd minutes into this recording, into this, you know, ebook, whatever it is, you're still, you're not someone who gives up. You're, you want to know how to overcome, right? And the easiest way to go out there and overcome is just persevere, right? If you stay committed to your dreams and your, and your focus and your vision, you will find ways to, you know, navigate the problems in these choppy waters and overcome that and get to where you want to be. I promise you that you will find the ways. And my passion is helping you guys, you know, learn from these mistakes that I've made and other people have made and learn from those and, you know, shortcut your learning curve. That's what I'm all about, right? Anyway, I digress. Many more months went by in 2017 where I kept creating content for other brands, I including some other successful online stores as well, which is pretty cool. And I just kept thinking to myself time and time again, as I was going out there and making all this content for other brands, when I used to make the content for my own brand, right? I was just thinking to myself, seriously, what makes all of these people that much smarter than me that, you know, how are they being successful and I'm not? Why did I fail yet all these other people are making loads of cash? And the answer to this turned out to be rather simple. The reason people are successful is because they follow a proven roadmap and the strategy to get where they want to be. They never give up no matter what gets in their way and they are solutions oriented, not problems oriented, right? I needed to drop my emotions, drop my ego and use logic to get myself where I wanted to be and learn how to navigate these issues in a smarter way. Now, with that said, one of my biggest mistakes I've made in my business career is getting too emotionally invested in things, right? The more you remove the emotions and look at logic, the better off you'll be as you're able to work through challenges and obstacles without getting upset and stressed. Remember that. After dealing with some freelance videography clients who didn't pay invoices for weeks and months past the due date, I was back to being pissed off all over again and I started envying all the people running e-commerce stores once again, right? I went from you know making money and now I had these clients that I was dealing with that weren't paying their bills and it just felt like the chargeback situation all over again just in a different business venture, right? The nonstop stress of having to be constantly begging for work to, you know, do this freelance stuff. I had to go out there on, on set, you know, arrange models, whatever, produce the content. I had to edit it together, then receive feedback, make alterations, basically be the client's bitch and just do everything that they wanted me to do. I would deliver it only for them, you know, to make me start it all from scratch again. And then I'd have to chase up payments. All of this, all of this, you know, admin kind of work as well, as well as having to be the creative, you know, director of everything and the filmmaker, the editor. It really got to me. It started, you know, having a lot of uh, pressure on me once again. One day I literally had to go out there and this is how bad some of this stuff got. I had to go out there and see a lawyer and file court documents on a videography client who just kept stringing me along saying that I'd get paid. Oh yes, you're going to get paid this week. Oh yes, you're going to get paid next week. Oh yes, I promise I will pay it to this week. I'll pay you extra. All of this, they would constantly lie about when I would receive the money's owed, right? I had to go out there and literally file court documents just running a simple old videography business because people weren't paying the bills. Now, after that meeting, when I was walking out of that law firm, I thought to myself, this isn't what I signed up for. I'm creative. I'm a creative person, right? I want to go out there and, and build beautiful stuff and create content. I didn't want to be involved in having to chase up invoices. I didn't get into freelance work to basically be a glorified debt collector that can take photos, right? So on the drive home, again, after some deep reflection and stuff, I had an epiphany and I just felt this surge of energy and passion rush over me again for what I once dropped. I wanted to get back into e-commerce, right? My revelation was simple, ambitious, yet quite a gamble at this point for me, considering everything that I've been through up until this point. So my you know, revelation was rather simple, and this is what it was. I was going to do my very best to revive my brand, Elmore Lewis, from the Shopify graveyard. I was going to do it right. I was going to go hard, play full out, and I promised myself I would never give up on this again. I was so determined to make this work because I saw so many other people going out there and making money. I was like, you know what? Again, why am I giving up on myself?
myself? Why am I letting these circumstances control my reality? I need to be the master of the universe. I need to control my reality. So I jumped in there and I gave it another crack, right? I was so determined to make this work. At that very moment, I was so fed up of basically trading my time for money as a freelance content creator slash invoice debt collector, right? I craved that feeling of total freedom once again that I previously temporarily had with e-commerce, right? Now, the beauty of running a highly profitable online store is that it didn't matter if I was sitting on a beach sipping a banana smoothie, whether I was fast asleep, eating at a cafe with some friends, or even watching the new Batman, whatever it was, whatever I was doing, when you've got an e-commerce store that's running around the clock, I was getting sales and making money 24 seven. That is how it works. That is why you build this because it's an income producing asset that works around the clock. And that's why I've fallen in love with this all over again, right? So the next few weeks after I had this revelation of wanting to get this off the ground again, it was all a bit of a blur, right? Days were blending into each other and I was just on the grind. I had some money saved up again from my content creation work at this point, And I was ready to go all in on e-commerce once again, despite my previous horrible experiences and stress. So, you know, call me an idiot, call me smart, call me perseverant, whatever you want to say don't mind um but yeah i and actually went out there and started giving it another crack so i went out there i revived my website and i gave it a facelift with the help of a new shopify pre-built theme and some basic custom coding that i had done to make the store look better the brand better and all of that right after my hiatus, I actually uh, went and touched base again with my original watch manufacturer from that first order. However, I hit them up with some brand new designs that I'd created with an even higher level of quality, right? This included more Swiss components and the updated request for like that Italian leather, you know, that Italian leather band look, right? The packaging got another upgrade as well and I ordered more stock this time, confident that I was gonna make this work. I was making it happen. Come hell or high water, I needed to make some money with this and I wasn't gonna stop until I had something running in e-commerce commerce, right? Another few months went by and my watches arrived. I was so stoked. They were great. They were even better than before. I had far more styles and varieties as well with more options for customers to go out there and choose from. Um, they also featured things like re replaceable bands so people could interchange their favorite straps to create more watch variations. And that also allowed me, um, allowed me to have some upsell and cross-sell opportunities there as well. Now, I immediately knew that for me to stand out and be the best, most exciting new watch brand in Australia that I had to become far better at marketing compared to these other brands, right? had to take things up a notch and that's what I did. This is where I got a little bit creative and a bit, you know, thought a bit outside of the box. No other watch brand has ever done this level of campaign shoot and I believe that they still haven't topped it to this day. What I ended up doing was I negotiated to do a video campaign and photo shoot on a couple of private jets. So I flew my ex-girlfriend at the time and my friend Alex Scapins out to Sydney with me to shoot this photo shoot and this video shoot for these watches that I had, right? So I'd also organized another few models to arrive at the private jet runway at the same time so we could get the shoot done in one afternoon and have it all good to go. So after flying to Sydney that Thursday, shooting all afternoon and arriving back home in Adelaide that same day, I had some pretty stellar content that I was really, really excited to add to my brand marketing toolkit. It's not every day you go out there and you do this full brand photo shoot on a jet, video shoot. Um, this is before I'd even flown on a private jet, you know, before I actually got to do that. So um, it was pretty cool just, you know, being in that environment. I definitely felt the abundance of, you know, being around that type of environment and energy and, you know, on a private jet, like what kids are on private jets? Barely anyone, right? So I found myself, I, I picked up the phones, I was sending emails to all these charter companies trying to, you know, negotiate deals, you know, oh, oh yeah, I'll give you XYZ watches if you let us use this plus cash. I was like paying the models. Some of these models were free as well because I wanting experience for that portfolio. All of this, I ended up just grinding out this, this content shoot. Um, so I had all of this amazing content ready to go. The next step was to throw what I wanted to do, which was a yacht party for some more next level content for our marketing campaigns too. However, I wasn't able to get a yacht on such urgent terms as well because I wanted it all done yesterday. So the next best thing was a catamaran that I found available in Adelaide as well. So I went balls deep into my budget yet again and hired the catamaran for just two hours, costing me over 1200 bucks. And I invited a couple dozen people to be part of this marketing campaign too. We shot a bunch of new videos and photos that I could use in both my advertising and on the website and itself plus social media. And again, this shoot went really well. Now that I had all of this new world-class content, the website was polished, looking sleek, and all my new products were ready to sell, I needed to jump back in, into advertising to try and bring in some new eyeballs onto all of this hard work and actually convert some sales and start making some money, right? So I ended up playing around myself with all of these ads again. And unlike the year prior, I turned on these ads and I saw zero results for the first time. I was struggling once again. I'd done all of this work. I'd put all of this money into these content shoots thinking that this was gonna change the game and my results were gonna be better than ever back even you know, better when I first got started, but it was the opposite. I wasn't making sales and I was struggling. And again, I was concerned. 
So what did I do from there? I quickly cut my losses on this first ad campaign, still with no idea what I was really doing. I had no structure. I was just launching campaigns with like one ad set and one creative in each one going, why isn't it working? You know, real, real newbie type shit. So I was doing this and I decided that I'd come this far, you know, I may as well just go the full slog and why not hire a reputable advertising agency to manage my ads for me? I wanted to work on the business. I wanted to focus on the creative side and not having to, you know, manage ads and things like this, right? So that's what I actually went out there and did. I went and found a uh, advertising agency. I wanted to maximize my results and I wanted these results to come in fast to recoup my investments and then start building this empire that I'd envisioned for myself, right? So after asking around and seeing some case studies for this agency, I got onto a video consulting call with this one particular agency who I'm not going to name in this podcast. Um, but if you message me, I might be able to give you the list of agencies to avoid. <laughs> we spoke about what I'd done at this point, my story, how I've gone through, you know, all of this shit. Uh, we basically talked about how the agency worked, how their fee structures were and everything like this. And they basically promised me that we'd be able to sell out about $150,000 worth of watches by the end of the year, if they managed my Facebook ads and I paid them their retainer fees and budgets and everything like that, right? Which is a pretty tall order. And, you know, it sounded good on paper and it definitely got me excited because I wasn't having much success at the time. So I was like, all right, these guys seem to know what they're doing. I'll just palm it off to them and trust that they'll get it done. Now, I guess I was somewhat naive just assuming that they'd be able to do that for me, go out there and just make all these sales, but they wanted to charge me $4,000 a month as a retainer, plus they demanded me to commit $300 plus per day in advertising spend. So if you do the maths on that, that means that they wanted a minimum commitment of over $14,000 per month. That was extremely big numbers for me back then and a budget that I was definitely not comfortable with. I was way out of my depth here, but I was so committed to making this work and I trust their case study. So I, you know what? I said, all right, cool, let's do it. I agreed on the assumption that they'd be able to sell me out of watches over Christmas and I'd be sitting on like, you know, a six figure profit being like, hell yeah, that was a great decision and then continue to run it up from there. But Boy, oh boy, was I a little bit naive here, but we continue, okay? At this point, I only had about $6,000-ish uh, left to my name that I'd saved doing my freelance photography work. So I was like, oh, you know, this is gonna this is gonna throw me off the deep end again. But I agreed to go ahead with this agency as in my mind, it was the only real chance I figured I had to get the money coming back in from everything that I'd spent on all the watches, all the content, all the shoots. Um, and I was like, you know what? I've done all of this. I need it to work. Like I'm gonna trust this agency to scale me up and then I'm gonna have this business printing. So I straight away transferred them their first retainer fee and did the maths on the remainder of my savings account to figure out how long I could stay afloat before I was out of money. I was a little bit stressed as I could only just afford a couple of weeks worth of ad spend before I was flat broke again if for whatever reason we didn't make sales on these new ads. So the ad campaigns got built out by the agency and we actually launched them live shortly after we went through all the admin stuff and the onboarding with the agency. So I sat there and twiddled my thumbs at this point. I was like, cool, I'm paying these guys to do it. Um, so I waited for them to magically start making me $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 plus per day at least for it to be worth my while. I was sitting there you know, very eager to start making this money. However, days went by and that only generated me a couple of sales. I was definitely in the negative at this point, that's for sure. Another few weeks in and they were yet to make any money back for me. And as the campaigns progressed, we started to make some money, but it was still losing me money every single day, like in net. Um, and it got pretty depressing to see my bank account dwindle down with ad spend and retainer fees and shipping costs and everything like that. Then it would slightly top up with the Shopify payouts and I'd be like, oh yes, some money's coming in. And then I would repeat the cycle all over again to have me bleeding out and having my savings account dwindle, right? It felt like death by a thousand cuts at this point with everything that I was doing in my e-commerce business. Now more time passed and coming into November now, it was time for me to pay them another $4,000 installment as their retainer for managing my ad campaigns. And I was sitting there kind of gobsmacked. I'm like, oh no, I can't be in this position. I, I've paid them and they've not made me profit in the last month. Why would I pay them again? I was shocked that they'd still be trying to take money from me when all they've done is lose me money. And they knew my situation and my age and my experience as well, right? But I guess, you know, I didn't read the fine print of the agreement and there was no money back guarantee if they if, if what they were you know selling me didn't work. Silly me, it was a naive mistake and we've learned from that, right? So I had to pay them or they threatened to take legal action to get all of the money we agreed on uh, over the duration of the contract, which is pretty, you know, scummy in my opinion, considering that, that they knew my situation, how young I was and uh, the promise that they'd made and then, you know, their delivery of it was severely uh, underwhelming, right? So this sucked and they were definitely trying to kick me while I was down, which hurt even more more. 
throughout the time when they were running the ads on my behalf, I was still out there trying to, you know, I, was, I wasn't just sitting on my ass waiting for these sales to come in. While they were running my ads, I still needed to make money to fund all of this kind of cash that was just being thrown in the, in, in the furnace, right? So I was still out there, still hustling, trying to go out there and find these freelance photo and video jobs, trying to do content creation for brands just to get the money that I'd be essentially, again, throwing into the furnace with this advertising agency. You know, I'd be losing money on my e-commerce brand, but I'd have to go out there and make, you know, $1,000 with this brand deal that I would do. And then I'd put it into this thing, into ads, into this agency, and I'd lose money and I'd do it all over again. And it just felt like this cycle of me just absolutely grinding my ass off and getting nowhere. So I pretty much emptied my bank account back to just 350 bucks after I sent that final retainer payment over and I canceled our contract. And luckily they only demanded that like second payment and not the third one. Cause again, I, I would have had no chance to pay that. And uh, that's the last thing I wanted to have was legal action at the time. I had no budget to fight it with lawyers. I would have just been, you know, trying to, trying to avoid it, which would have been stressful as well. So there's a constant theme of me, you know, getting in a little bit above, you know, in the deep end of where I should have been because I was just so ambitious and I just was going all in all the time trying to make my dreams that I'd had such hyper focus on a reality. So after all of this time, sweat, money, energy, effort, tears, blood, sweat, everything like that, all I had to show for it was just a few more customers and a lot less money in my bank account. I literally just had a few hundred bucks left in my bank account after all of this effort. I sat there, I looked at my account and I let out a deep defeated sigh and I sat back down unsure of what to do next. Time passes and it's now Christmas day, 2017 at this point. As you can tell, I definitely was not having the most festive of seasons or holidays. No jolly laughter or stockings filled up with Shopify cha-chings at this point and the agency served me up a big steaming lump of coal for Christmas, right? So I woke up on Christmas day and I couldn't really be bothered celebrating Christmas with my family and all the cousins and everything like that. I was once again feeling dejected, fragile, helpless, and even a little bit depressed at the time if I remember. Everything I thought would work just put me back to square one again and again. It was a common theme in my life at the time. I could not seem to break through and find something that worked. I did my best to put on a smile that day during my family outing for Christmas. However, my girlfriend at the time, now ex-girlfriend, and my family noticed that I was not my normal self and something was worrying me, right? That afternoon, I again remembered the pact I'd kind of made to myself about not giving up. And again, foolishly, maybe naivety, whatever it is, I decided to have one last ditch attempt to go all in again, 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 and give Elmore Lewis literally one last push before calling it quits and throwing in the towel on e-commerce altogether if it didn't work, right? Whatever my plan was, this needed to be my buzzer beater three-pointer shot to save the day, to save the game, right? I had no other options if this failed. I'd have to go back to that nine to five job life because this freelance content creation life as well was putting me in an early grave with all of the stress that I was having to over, you know, go through as well on top of, you know, trying to run the e-commerce business and everything else going on in my life at the time, which is crazy. So this was literally my last attempt. So what did I do? I studied the advertising campaigns that this advertising agency had ran for me in the past that weren't working. Um, and, and I basically, I, I uncovered, unfortunately, that there were so many spelling errors, grammatical mistakes, incorrect, like irrelevant emojis being used, broken links, poorly chosen images, cr things cropped in the wrong way, and all of these little issues, right? Going through everything at a microscopic level had my jaw on the floor with shock at how little this agency seemed to care about my brand and the perceived value of it in the market. That putting out there all of this about like it's my brand being showcased and it looks like amateur hour no wonder that no one's buying from me with these ads right now i won't go into any further detail but the lesson learned here is no matter how much you pay an agency to manage your ads, they really do not give a shit about your business compared to you unless they have a direct financial stake in the up, you know, the uptick of your business, right? The agency might actually care and they might do a great job if they're not getting paid a retainer and if they're getting, you know, a percentage of net profits to manage your ads. Um, you know, that might be a way that they're, they're going to be happy to manage your ads and do a good job. Um, and I'm currently exploring options like that with uh, new brands that I'm running at the moment as well. So I'll keep you guys posted if I find a good agency. Um, but yeah, again, no matter how much you pay an agency, you know, in retainer, they do not really give a shit about your business. They're just using you, you know, to take your retainer fee and just put some ads up that you could have done yourself to a high waist, like a, a way higher standard, right? This was evidently true in my experience, at least. 
So that afternoon, after lots of self-reflection and analysis, I built up a brand new advertising structure. I, I'd sat there with a pen and paper with the whiteboard little thing that I had. I sat there and I was scribbling out all these different kind of structures and ideas and funnel ideas and everything. I was figuring out all of this different stuff. I created a different unique offer. I tried some different imagery that I'd had sitting there and I set up what was my last ditch effort ads campaign to try and launch and get sales. Again, this was my buzzer beater. This is my last chance, right? I'd formulated somewhat of a strategy myself based on my experiences at the time what I've been learning, what I've been seeing work for me in the past, what didn't work for me this time, and uh, obviously making sure that I didn't make all the same mistakes on my ad account that the ad agency did, right? Now, my plan here, my buzzer beating game winning plan, right? was very simple. It was to run a simple boxing day sale for my store. And I was going to give people a limited time discount code to save a percentage off their purchase, right? And give them free shipping. I felt like I'd run enough ad budget now to where many people may have seen my brand or heard of it through my ads. And I wanted to give all of these potential buyers a reason to get off the fence and finally pull the trigger on making a purchase. That was my idea. I was like, all right, well, I've been running all these ads. People haven't really been taking a lot of action. I've had like like low metrics, they weren't very good. Um, my ROAS was definitely no, no good. Um, but yeah, I saw I saw all of the impressions and the reach that my ads had. You know, there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that had seen these ads. So I was like, I wonder what percentage of these people would buy if I gave them a really good like time limited offer, like with a discount to make them get off the fence and finally buy. And this is kind of how I stumbled across some of the structures and methods that I teach you guys inside the program, and particularly on some of the high level stuff that I'm giving you inside of v, uh, version three of the program as well. Well, this is kind of how it was all birthed. Like this is the first time I really found this and I cracked the code with it and it started working. And then from there, we just reiterated it, optimized it and made it work even better, right? So that's kind of how it all came together, right? So I was running these simple boxing day ads. This was my last ditch effort. I only had literally a few hundred bucks in my bank account and I was gonna do whatever it took to try and get this either working or I'd throw in the towel, right? So that was my plan. So what did I do with my budget? I made these campaigns, I did all of this. I set my total daily budget for my Facebook ads for the next day for Boxing Day to be $350, which coincidentally, if you remember, that was the exact same amount left in my savings bank account. As I said, this was truly my last ditch effort to make this work. I went all in in every sense of the word. If this experiment and last ditch effort failed, at least I could say to myself and to other people, I honestly gave it my all and it just didn't work, right? So what did I do later that day? It was really late at night, it was around 9 p.m. I turned on the ads and I just waited for approval on these ads, right? It was it was the evening before Boxing Day, so still Christmas Day in 2017. Now, my girlfriend and I had gotten into bed after I'd closed my laptop up after setting up these ads um, and I tried to go straight to sleep. I kind of wasn't in the mood for anything. I just tried to go back straight to sleep. I was trying to escape from the reality of what was happening all around me and hopefully find some comfort and peace in my dreams, maybe even find some Shopify sales in my dreams because I surely wasn't experiencing them at the time, which <laughs> I don't know what I was really thinking at the time. I knew I was just so in a, in a you know, out of body experience where I just felt so horrible and defeated. And I was trying so hard for all of this time to just keep my head above water. It was longer than most people would have ever committed into, into following their vision if it was going this badly, right? But I truly believe that everything happens for you and not to you. So all of this bad stuff that was happening and everything that was, you know, putting me in this corner and putting my back up against the wall and making me go all in all of these different times, all of this is testing from the universe to see how bad do you want it? You guys may have seen that photo where it's that dude mining towards diamonds and then it's the guy like turns around and then he just leaves before he hits gold. That could have been me so many times throughout this story if, you, if you're following along. I could have said, no, nope, I'm throwing in the town now, like 10, 20 times at this point. If I'd done that, I'd be stuck working a nine to five job that I hate and I wouldn't have the freedom and opportunities that I have now. And I certainly wouldn't be educating you and, guys, and you guys and, and girls and inspiring you guys and girls right now with my journey. So this is a testament to the fact that I truly believe the universe is looking out for you and it's testing you at all times and it wants to see how bad do you want your vision in your head. If you want it bad, you overcome all these obstacles like I'm showing you how I've done and you guys can go out there and get anything that you want. You've just got to persevere and I'm telling you that from the bottom of my heart and I truly believe it. If you're listening to this right now, you 120,000% have what it takes to fucking win in this world, no doubt. So pat yourself on the back for listening this much into it. So now we're going to get to the more positive stuff, okay? So this is, so far it's all been a bit doom and gloom and me trying to overcome my obstacles, but let's get back into the story, right? So again, I was in my, you know, in bed that night. I just turned on these uh, ads to go live later in the evening uh, for Boxing Day, right? Anyway, just a couple hours later, just around midnight, I was almost entering that deep sleep kind of state uh, when my phone suddenly made the all too familiar, yet not familiar enough, cha-ching sound effect, a Shopify sale. 
The first sale from these new ads had finally been made. My girlfriend was still awake watching Netflix at the time, so she shook me and said, Eli, you just made a sale. Wake up. Look, look, look. The new ads you launched, you actually made a sale. You know, I was still obviously in my mood. I was upset about everything. And in my state of being half asleep, I shrugged her off. You know, I was like, yeah, cool, whatever. What's, what's one sale going to do for me? It's not really going to do much for me at this point. I've only got a few hundred bucks. Oh, now I'm going to have 450 bucks. Like, you know, I went, I tried to go back to sleep again because I knew that this wasn't going to change really anything for me at the time. So from there, I went to sleep and I have no idea what I dreamed about that night. It was probably uh, making sales. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Driving around fast cars, whatever I dreamed about back then. Anyway, I woke up in the morning. I went and checked my phone anxiously, obviously, as I did every single morning. I looked at my vision board phone wallpaper and in front of it, I saw that there were some sales notifications sitting on my lock screen. I saw Shopify. Elmore Lewis has a, a new order for one product totaling $143.20 two minutes ago. Shopify, Elmore Lewis has a new order for one product totaling $151 45 minutes ago. Shopify, Elmore Lewis has a new order for three products totaling $303.40 three hours ago, etc. I saw all of these notifications sitting there from the night. I was once again shocked to the core. It woke me up and I jolted upright in my bed. My adrenaline was rushing again because it felt like I may have figured it out again, but I didn't get my hopes up too much because I knew how everything had happened in the past, right? So I was like, all right, there's something, something's got to be wrong here. I definitely haven't figured it out. Nothing for me had really worked at this point. So I was like, all right, well, cool. I've made a bunch of sales. Sick. Anyway, I quickly typed my password into my phone. Again, my girlfriend was still asleep, so I couldn't really wake her up and say anything, even though I was pretty excited, but I was also cautious. Anyway, I went into my phone. I opened up the Shopify app. I swiped down and I refreshed. And I saw that while I was sleeping that night, from the moment I turned on the ads, went to sleep, I'd made over $1,700, $1,700 plus while sleeping already. Whoa, no fucking way, I thought to myself. Something something must be wrong here. Like there must be a glitch or the, you know, definitely what the hell is going on here? That's crazy. Over the remainder of the day, I never once, funnily enough, checked how much I'd spent on my advertising campaigns. Now you might be wondering, well, why didn't you check what you were spending on your ads, Eli? Well, because I was legitimately petrified that I would added an extra zero to my ad budget accidentally making it, you know, $3,500 per day instead of $350 a day because I wasn't in my mind. I didn't see that kind of ROAS as being achievable for me at the point at that point because I was just losing money consistently. So for me to see, to wake up to making well over $1,700 while I was asleep, that was crazy. That was crazy. I couldn't believe that that was happening on my ad budget. So I definitely had anxiety anxiety for the entire day thinking that I'd screwed up the ad budget, either made it $3,500 or $35,000 a day in ad budget, which I didn't have again. I was like, oh, here we go. I'm going to rack up another Facebook ads bill and not be able to pay it. And all this hard work is back down into the, into the gutter, right? I remember I finally bit the bullet and nervously checked my advertising spend later that evening after my ex-girlfriend was like, hey, you know, you should check it. Just check it. See, you know, it's probably not like incorrect. You're probably just overthinking it. So I actually opened it up, I refreshed it and I gripped my teeth as I refreshed my Facebook ads manager dashboard, trying to like envision how big the number was going to be and how down bad I was going to be. At that point, I only had spent about $320 so far. I was relieved and I was shocked. I was staring at the amount spent. I refreshed it a few times, made sure I was looking at today and it showed me that I'd only spent about $320. So from there, guess how much I ended up making that first day of launching this new sales campaign using my new freedom funnel structure. I'd made about $7,000 in less than 24 hours. Holy shit. This was the day that everything changed for me. This was the day that the universe finally rewarded me for overcoming all of these obstacles. I don't know what it was. And it's giving me goosebumps right now thinking about it. The fact that I went to bed dejected, about to throw in the towel and literally about to throw it in. I, I wasn't like bullshitting that time. I had no other option. It was my last $350 in my bank account that I spent on ads to try and see if I could clear out some more of this stock and just make some money and see if, if I had this one last ditch effort, what would come of it. There was no universe that exists where I would have thought the day prior that I would have made $7,000 that day. That was absolutely unfathomably unrealistic to me, but this, seeing it happen was just a crazy feeling. It was so inspiring. This was the day that everything changed for me from that point forwards. Boxing day since then, each year hits very differently for me after that. For me, the day holds a lot of meaning, right? The day when I knew that the only limit on what you can achieve with this e-commerce business model are literally the limits that you place on yourself and your willingness or not, or lack thereof, willingness to go out there and overcome obstacles. The customers are out there. They have the money ready to spend with you. They are online and they're wanting to shop. All you need to do is follow the right process and be consistent and you will be able to go out there and put an offer in front of these potential buyers and convert them into raving customers just like I figured out to do. I'll be at the hard way, but you guys have 
kind of the cheat codes. You guys get to tap into the easier way, right? Which I'm sure you guys appreciate a lot. And obviously that's why you guys can go out there and get far greater results far quicker than when I was first getting started back here. So this is how much of my current successful methodology was born. And I rose from the ashes like a phoenix with all of these unique strategies and ideas to keep testing after this point forwards. On that same day, that evening, as I was closing in on my first $7,000 days on Shopify, the world seemed to sing again. I was ecstatic and I felt this wave of euphoria and peace come over me because I'd realized that I'd done it, that I'd found a way to actually make money. I don't know what it was. I don't know. At the time, I had no idea really what it was, but I pinpointed it and I was like, you know what? This is, this is really good. So I wrote it all down and I kept that in mind. And I remember driving to McDonald's with my girlfriend later in the day to get myself a coffee frappe and some fries as a little cheeky treat for having such a great day and changing my life effectively. I mean, yeah, weird self treat, you know, a coffee frappe and some chips for, for changing your life. But, you know, even while driving, my phone kept making sales. I couldn't believe how often they were coming in at the time. And my girlfriend and I were listening to music on the Bluetooth and it was just going cha-ching, raining, like ringing through the car speakers. And it just felt like my body just had a weird out of body experience again where all these cha-chings were just coming in and it was just the car was like rocking to it it was such a weird feeling you know you'd be listening to some music and then you'd hear cha-ching Shopify Elmore Lewis has a new order for one product totaling $143 just now once again I was feeling happy I was content and again I had a smile on my face that you couldn't shake who knows, if it wasn't for all of these intense trials and tribulations that I'd experienced trying to start and grow my own online store and having to face all these challenges head on, would the Boxing Day results have ever happened? And would I be where I am today without the struggles? To be honest, probably not. The struggles have helped me build character and mature a lot, right? I'm actually really grateful for all of the difficult times and the pain that eventually led me to making up to $7,000 in a single day on that store, right? It was a wild ride, that's for sure. And you don't even know the half of it as well. I'm just showing you kind of the the summarized version here. Now, the good news is my sales didn't stop there at just $7,000 for the day. Over the course of the next five days coming into the new year, I ended up making another $21,000-ish before the beginning of 2018. That's right, $21,000 in just a week, or less than a week, in just five days, right? My perspective had finally shifted and the penny dropped for me. No longer was I just trying to squeeze a couple sales a day from my store, right, just to keep the, you know, the lights on, so to speak. I saw the bigger picture and I had a vision of myself actually making the big bucks finally, right? I realized that if I kept up this momentum and ROAS at this point, I'd soon have a thriving online store like MVMT and Daniel Wellington in no time. The brands that I once looked up to and envisioned myself becoming, I realized that I was finally well on my way to being able to have something of that level if I just kept it on track, right? It was time to start seeing the fruits of my labor really come pouring in. I'd cracked a code with this strategy, so I thought, so I wanted to repeat it again after I figured uh, finished up with this last campaign promotion. So I thought about what other shopping, you know, holiday, holiday shopping event I could capitalize on next. And I figured New Year's was the play, you know, New Year's. You know, I was thinking, oh yeah, I'll run a New Year's sale. So I ran another ad campaign for New Year's coming into 2018. And that did really well as well. Then over the coming months after that, I finally got to start seeing my bank account increase exponentially. Let me tell you, it felt amazing to see my bank account go from that bleak $350 that I had, right? To over $28,000 positive within just over a week. This this last ditch effort to save my business dreams honestly changed my life as you can see. I was on the right path now and I could feel something just clicked right in the universe and it, like, it just patted me on the back and said, you know what, you deserve this and this is just the start for you. So what that allowed me to do with this new you know, influx of cash that I had, I secured the capital now to place another large order of watches. I could now travel around the world a bit. I visited some beautiful locations. I, I flew around for the first time on a private chartered jet, which was awesome with my ex-girlfriend. I met some incredible people and all of this money allowed me to most importantly do what I love to do, be creative and get paid for it running this business, right? E-commerce was the vehicle that was allowing me to change my life day by day. The vision that I had for myself and this brand was slowly coming to life as I dreamed of since I was in high school. Since I was being bullied and people were talking shit, people were harassing me online for my ambitions and dreams of wanting to start an e-commerce business, this vision that I once thought was just a pipe dream and I was trying so hard to convince myself that I could do it despite everything around me crumbling, that vision that I held true to and persisted, it was actually coming to life, funnily enough, right? Having all of these new sales and customers was allowing me to build quite a sizable database as well, you know, of all of these customers that had bought from me that I could send more potential promotional emails to. And I hadn't really yet taken advantage of it because I'd just been trying to, you know, scale my business as rapidly as possible. I wasn't considering all these other avenues of monetization, right? So naturally, after realizing that I was building up quite a sizable list of customers, I thought to myself, 
all right, well, you're having some success selling these classic style watches, you know, these, you know, trendy minimalistic style watches at the time, right? How about changing the game and designing a new watch and selling a limited edition run of them? Something cool, something unique. How can you do this, Eli? I thought to myself. So I went out there and again, you know, I have these ideas and I implement them. I take action. So that's exactly what I did. I went to figure it out and make this idea come to life once again. I wanted to bring something totally different to the market and launch it with a new strategy. This new watch was something that I knew people wanted from my market research, yet they had no clue to where to get it from because no one was really doing it yet. They loved these cool premium luxury style brands like Rolex, AP, Patek, all of these different kind of high-end brands like Tag Heuer, whatever they are. Um, I, I was looking at all of these and I was looking at everything that was kind of in the price range of just under a few hundred bucks. And there wasn't really anything that had the brand perceived value of these, you know, five, six figure watches in that price range. So I wanted to bring that, um, you know, perceived high value down to the more affordable market and capitalize on that, right? That's, that was my idea. So this was the birth point of my best-selling Voyager chronograph collection from Elmore Lewis that I put together. At the time, I was obsessed with creating an amazing watch that would shit on all of the competitors' styles, right? I spent a fairly long time designing these watches as well, ordering samples, refining the style and all the functionality, and coming up with a watch that was both practical, comfortable, and reliable, but also, in my opinion, the most stylish looking watch on the market at the best price point. I was pretty happy with myself and the peer feedback was great. Everyone wanted to get their hands on it and they wanted to place pre-orders. So I was like, all right, could be onto something here. My plan actually after, you know, people wanting to buy them and I didn't have the stock as it was just a mock-up, I was like, oh, well, who wants one? And people were going, yep, me. And I'm like, well, I don't have them yet. <laughs> so my plan came together was doing a pre-order sale so that I'd never have to be out of pocket for this order of watches, right? Because again, I, just as I started to see my bank account increase, into tens of thousands of dollars. I didn't want to completely deplete it again just to ha you know, have all of those issues that I ran into earlier happen all over again, right? So I wanted to go out there and use this asset that I built, which is my existing customer database and run some, you know, some, some promotional emails, basically letting people know what was coming, letting people know my new design and letting them know that I was going to do a pre-order sale, meaning that they could like register their interest and buy them. And then they would know that they're going to get made eventually, right? So from there, I calculated my costs and my profit margins and determined my BEP, break even point, that if I could sell X number of watches, then I could pay my manufacturer and everything else that came after that would effectively be straight profit. I was smart in that sense, right? So I got some final samples in of this watch that I designed, I put together that they'd finally manufactured, you know, they'd had me pay these custom mold fees for it and all of this. And I looked at it and I was like, yes, this is the one I'm super fired up about this design and I know other people are going to love it. So I was really excited. From there, I followed the same advertising structure and strategy that I'd used in my previously successful campaigns. And I also added some email marketing into the mix at the time, which I thought was a really good recipe for success there. So after several emails hyping my customer database up about the new watches coming soon, you know, I was putting it all on social media, everything like that, and I was gauging their feedback. I was getting tons of email replies from prior customers begging basically for me to release these watches ASAP and let them buy. After all of this was happening and I was starting to build some of that momentum and hype and pressure, I decided it was time to go live with this launch. So I went ahead, went into the Shopify product and made it active. And within a little over a week of it going live, I'd actually gotten enough pre-orders on these new designs so that I could send the money over to my manufacturer and get them made with no out-of-pocket costs. So I literally sat there just to recap on this business model that I'd had. I built this customer list, right? And I hyped them up about this new design that I figured that they would like based on some basic market research and some surveys of people. I was just like, yep, do you like this? Would you buy it? They're like, yep, yep. And I was like, oh, it'll be priced around this. Does that seem fair or not? They're like, yep. So I went out there and I put this together. I made some cool mock-ups showing how the watch is going to look. I, I, I excited people, right? I had a sample of it. I took some sample photos of the product, put it on a website, marketed it, built some hype to that email list and on social media and everything letting people know that this watch was coming. I had a few different color varieties as well. Um, and yeah, basically just gave them the opportunity to buy it from the website. And doing that literally had money pouring in without me having to ever spend a cent out of pocket, basically, which was crazy to me. I was literally just putting up a, a, a JPEG image of my watch and people were buying it under the assumption that I was going to get them made for them. Like that was, that was an incredible moment for me because I was like, hang on. I can go out there and, and print money basically at this point because I didn't have to put any money into this. I'll just send some emails and excite people about a new product drop. They'd buy and then I'd use their money to go fund the order and then I'd get the products, fulfill the orders and everything from there would be straight profit. 
That was another light bulb moment for me, realizing the power of marketing to your existing customers and your like email database to build more loyal customers and increase your higher customer LTV, your lifetime value, right? A couple months later, coming into August of 2018, all of the watches finally arrived, ready to send to my first pre-order customers and begin selling further, which was really, really awesome. People were very eager to get their watches. As you can imagine, they were like super fired up that these pre-sale ones had um, finally kind of been manufactured and ready to send as well. They were stunning. Everything was perfect. I was so happy. I immediately sat down and started packing them all together and started shipping them out to our customers using Australia Post eParcel. And I started getting more five-star reviews than ever before on these new products. Everything was smooth sailing and I was very excited about it. I now knew that it was time to take them to market in a big way now that I had the stock and I needed to run some more specific advertising campaigns to sell more of these watches, right? I needed to show these watches off better in advertising campaigns following the same frameworks and strategies that were working for me consistently prior. I needed to do it and take it up a notch because again, I was selling these new watches for almost $300, which is basically almost double the price of the other ones I was selling. So I was like, you know, I've got even more profit margin in there. I can afford to spend more in advertising to acquire a customer. So that's what I did. And I had two of these styles of watch that I had sell out extremely quickly, making me tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars in sales per style and extremely good profit margins, right? These styles were crazy popular. And I can also attribute my next level packaging that I went ahead and made to these sales results as well. As customers were really getting that luxury watch experience for a very fair price while I had really good profit margins on them as well. It's all about brand positioning and that's how I envisioned it from the first, you know, from the get-go, as I just said before, I wanted to bring that vibe of buying like a really premium timepiece down into the affordable kind of price range, which no one was really doing at the time. Everyone was doing these like minimalistic watches, but I was like, how do I make this beautiful looking, like expensive looking watch and make it affordable while still looking like it could belong on like Rolex's site or something like that. So that's where I focused on brand positioning and making the perceived value extremely high, right? So I kept running these Facebook ads. I was sending out email campaigns. I was using Instagram influencers as well and optimizing this well-oiled machine that is my e-commerce store to make me more and more money. And I was figuring things out along the way because again, I didn't have a program. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a community. I have All I had was myself and my experiences, my mistakes and successes to base everything from. That was how I was making my decisions, right? So I just kept you know, trying to optimize all of my metrics, all of my ad metrics, all of my store metrics, all my email metrics. I was focused on increasing these little one percenters that I knew would add up and make a big difference at the end of the day, right? So I basically did everything that I've been showing you guys and girls how to do in my six figure brand accelerator training programs. Again, I was showing you you know, how to do it. I showed you how to do it because that's what I was doing and it worked a charm and it still does to this day as well. So as I kept learning more and seeing great results, more people kept messaging me on Instagram and Facebook as I was showing people how much money I was making and they're looking to get help and advice on starting their own online businesses as well. So I was really enjoying sharing my journey of running an e-commerce brand with my social media following that I've been building too on the side, obviously through my content creation and influencer stuff, my social media profile is very handy for that as well, which is what I was using to get a lot of my freelance deals. Um, so yeah, obviously then I started showing people what I was doing with my, with my brand, showing them like my video shoots, my photo shoots, showing that I was taking it seriously, showing the money that was coming in and the things that I was able to do with it. And after a while, it took up a lot of my time connecting and continuing to give the same kind of advice over and over to different people because people kept messaging me all the time after seeing, you know, all this money that I was making. They're like, hey man, can you help me? What is this? What is this Shopify thing? No one's ever taught. Like, this is new. I've got no idea about this. Is this real? Is this legal? Right? After all of these questions and I was answering people, I was sending people videos and voice notes and trying to help people one-on-one on one, -on -one um, I ended up you know deciding that the best way to help people and also to kind of systemize things was to create a program like a recipe like a step-by-step -step system right this is how the six-figure brand accelerator program was kind of born and envisioned right my objective when creating it was to save you my students the stress headache heartache and troubles that I had when I first got started I desperately wish I had access to everything that you all have when I first got started if I had what you have I'd have made millions of dollars more, far quicker without the stress and headaches, right? With that being said, version three is gonna change the game and I'm more proud of version three of this program than any other piece of educational content that I've ever produced. But more on that later, let me keep telling you the story. The program I developed back then clearly broke down all of the steps behind how to go out there and start and grow your own highly profitable online store, just like I'd finally cracked the code to doing without any prior experience or needing huge upfront costs as well, right? As I kept recording and uploading new content and strategies into, into my program with case studies of what I was doing and how I was doing it and showing my brand and everything, and I kept enrolling new students through my social media as people were just messaging me and I was like, hey man, I literally send them an image of my course curriculum like, oh, I cover this, this, and this. Do you want it? It's like 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever. 
whatever I was charging at the time. And they're like, yep, done, lock me in. Like no one else is doing this, I'm super keen. And I would show them what I was doing and I'd I'd help people and I'd show people how to do it. And they would see my case studies and I would tell them what to do. And people started to see some really great results as well. And they were doing it far quicker than how I did it, right? Because again, they were learning from my mistakes, mistakes and successes and following along with my proven frameworks, which logically makes far more sense, right? And for me, it was so addicting for me to see other people thriving from learning my lessons, right? I went through the turmoil. I went through the trials and tribulations. I don't have to help you guys. I don't have to do this. You know, I could be sitting on a beach, retired, never have to work again at this point and have my investments, you know, cover my living expenses and just sit there and just never lose money, but just continue to make money, right? I do this because I'm actually truly passionate about seeing you guys win because it's it's addictive to me, right? Once you make a certain amount of money in your own life and in your own business and, you know, your bank accounts at a certain level, you don't really get a lot of pleasure out of making the money. You get the pleasure out of seeing what other people do and people pay money so that they have skin in the game. That's why I took everything that I did so seriously was because I was investing my hard-earned money into it, right? So that I would take it seriously. If you don't pay, you don't pay attention, right? And this could not be more true. That's why people buy mentoring. That's why people buy university degrees. That's why people will go into debt for your, for a university degree, which is an outdated piece of paper in most ways, right? And especially if you're doing business or marketing or something like that, it's all outdated curriculum. So if you don't have skin in the game, you know, you're not going to pay attention. It's like if you chuck Netflix on the TV, you're going to be on your phone, you're going to be on your laptop, you're going to be playing around on a game or something. You're going to play. You're going to be playing. Um, you're going to be playing like eight ball pool on iMessage with your girlfriend, whatever you're doing. Right? You're not going to pay attention. That's why when you invest money into this program, into the program that I built out for you, when you whatever you do, if you invest in a pre-made store that I can go out there and build you with my team, whatever it is, the more money you spend, the more you pay attention. If you don't have skin in the game. You've got nothing to lose. Therefore, why are you going to look at overcoming obstacles? Why are you going to put effort in, right? If I charge a million dollars for my program and I guaranteed you that it would make you a million dollars back, would you do it? A lot of you would go into debt to do it because you know that you can make a million bucks. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to charge 10,000. I'm not going to charge 20,000. I'm not going to charge any of that because I know you just need to put enough money into into a program, into whatever it is. And you don't have to do it through me. You can do it through someone else. But invest money into your education from someone who's reliable, who's genuine, who actually cares, right? And that will pay dividends because you're putting money, you're putting your own money at risk, right? And it's up to you to go out there and, and see the returns for yourself. You have to go out there and apply the knowledge and information. You need to look at overcoming the obstacles that will come up because that's the only way you grow is if you put skin in the game and learn lessons, right? There's a million and one free videos you can watch on YouTube that cover kind of similar things to what I talk about. However, you're sifting through so much bullshit that's just out there because it's it's like freemium content. What they do is they create these free videos saying, oh, here's how to start a Shopify business from A to Z. It's an eight hour YouTube video, right? But then all they're doing is just giving you the absolute bare bones, which everyone else is running. And there's nothing, there's no special source. There's no unique methods, right? That's where version three of the program really steps up and leads the game. We cover a lot of really unique new things. We cover how to get faster domestic shipping times. We have domestic suppliers, meaning that you can actually sell to Australian customers from an Australian supplier, for example, in Melbourne or New South Wales, and they'll ship it to your customers in a few days. No other competitors, no other e-commerce educators, so to speak, whoever they are, no one else is showing how to do this, guys. We're doing this right now and it's working phenomenally and our customer satisfaction rate is through the roof. It's awesome. We've got things like, you know, new TikTok case study ads. We've got new new case studies. We've got new ad strategies. Everything's been updated inside of V3 and I'm super excited to give it uh, all to you guys as well. So make sure you guys are tuned in and ready for V3 launching very, very shortly as well. You guys will have more information on that in the group as well. But that being said, I'm very proud of it. I know you guys are going to love it. And if you love it even half as much as I loved putting it together for you guys, you're going to be very, very impressed. So back then again in 2018, like I was saying, how it all came to be was I was just getting all these messages of people wanting to get started. So I put together the program and the curriculum covered everything from A to Z. I pretty much had tried to make it as much of a recipe as possible. So at this point in time, right, we're approaching quarter four of 2018, which if you don't know, quarter four is basically the final quarter of the year, meaning the time frame between October, November, and December, right, roughly. In the retail and uh, online shopping industry, this is regarded as the busiest, most profitable time of the year, right, when it comes to consumers buying things due to shopping events taking place that are huge, like Black Friday, Christmas, you know, Cyber Monday, Boxing Day, New Year's, and more. For someone like myself and like yourself running an online store, this is the time of year where you make the most money 
money compared to the rest of the year. It's really honestly, quarter four is the best time of the year to be selling. And that's where you should expect to clean up and make an absolute motto, right? Now, I believe I had around 30 or so coaching students in my program at this point back then um, from memory. And I was sharing my personal strategies and plans on how I would plan to dominate Black Friday of 2018 and try pulling as much money as possible, right? So I gave you guys the plan. Ultimately, I took the same strategies that have been working for me for over the last year and I applied them into, again, my new advertising campaign for Black Friday. For my valued six FBA students back then, as valued as you are now, I was then able to go out there and break down the step-by-step -step process of setting up and executing the exact same marketing campaigns that have been getting me the results um, and also get, got me these results that I'm about to share with you from this campaign being executed again. So I, I showed everyone the strategy of what I was going to be doing and I implemented it to the T of what my plan was and uh, the experience that I was going to do worked. What I did was I took these methods that I've been using to make hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales for my Shopify brand and ventures, and I systemized them into a blueprint that any other person could follow and replicate results from. That's what I did. That's what, that's what my goal was, and it uh, worked a treat. So look, after I went ahead and executed on this plan that I gave you guys in the mastermind group then, over the course of that short Black Friday weekend, I personally implemented the strategy that I taught to that small group of students, and I made some good money. I actually ended up making over $45,000 in less than four days with only a few thousand dollars in advertising spend. It was a staunch result for sure. I was running up a bag at this point, making sales all day, every day with an AOV of over $110 and cogs of about $20. Profit margins were thick, as you can imagine, right? I was making a killing. Now, this solid momentum continued into the next week as well as I cleared another $18,000 quite quickly, selling me out of many popular watch styles. And again, it felt awesome. I was seeing my bank account grow. Now, the cool thing is the results weren't just significant and life-changing for only me either. My advertising strategies have evolved and improved since then as well. And I've not only worked for me, as you've seen, but they've also been proven to work for many of my students as well, with students hitting their first $1,000 days, $5,000 weeks, $10,000 months and beyond. Since that period of time, back then many students obviously you guys see them in the group all the time many of you guys have even hit 30k months 40k months 60k months and beyond i've seen dozens of students surpass the six figure month club now which is insane to see knowing that you guys have the ability now to go out there and generate what most people would strive to earn in a year you guys can pull in in a month working from your laptop running this business model right it's crazy knowing that you know you guys can go out there and make that kind of income is truly life-changing forevermore if you guys go out there for those of you who are in the five and six figure a month club some of you who are probably close in on seven figures a month right now, you guys know that you're set for life. You have the skills, you've got the, the toolkit of everything you need to go out there and make money and provide for your family, knowing that you have that security and consistency because you are trained well. You put your skin in the game, you invested in yourself, you invested in me, you invested in the smart way of learning and shortcutting your learning curve and that's gonna pay dividends for the rest of your life, right? Which is awesome. Again, it's crazy is that the funny thing is that all of these students crushing it in the higher income brackets, it's so funny because all of you come from such diverse and different walks of life and situations, right? I've literally got 17 year old kids doing $40,000 plus days. I've got middle-aged blokes making 150K a month when they previously were just in the real estate game or something like that. I've got young women doing six figures a year in profits, you know, and doing whatever they wish on their terms. It's, it's freaking amazing. I love seeing what all of you are capable of. And since the get-go inspiring and training others to overcome obstacles and build their dream life. That is something that lights me up and people who are close to me in my life know that that is my highest calling and that's what gets me like the most excited and fired up. I love seeing all of you guys achieve things that you thought were never even possible for yourself and the, and seeing you guys break down all of those mental limiting beliefs that prevent you from getting what you want. I love destroying those beliefs for you and seeing what you can actually do once you actually you know throw your excuses aside and commit because there's two types of people in this world. There's action takers and then there's quitters and losers. There's winners and losers, right? Are you going to be a winner or a loser? The good news is you get to decide, right? So yes, basically I'm so passionate about helping other people. I'm so passionate about teaching and inspiring. I'd say it's one of my primary values as a man, right? So back to the e-commerce journey. Uh, so Q4 again, doesn't stop at just Black Friday, right? It continues again through the months of, you know, November, December, Christmas, Boxing Day and New Year's, right? Over that period of time, my students and I collectively generated hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars using a select few proven tactics that I shared inside my program at the time as well. Moving forward from then, coming into early 2019, my watch brand was no longer the 
the only e-commerce store and business that I was running. I was running up some other drop shipping stores, selling different products and doing some other merchandise collabs with pretty famous YouTubers as well and other great projects, netting in more profits than ever. And it was a crazy ride up considering that just, you know, months and months ago, I was down bad basically like a year ago I was down bad and I was struggling for like almost a couple of years trying to get things off the ground I was throwing everything that I had into this journey and it was not showing me any kind of you know ease or, or comfort or rewards or anything I was battling against the absolute worst current taking me in the wrong direction out into the sea when I needed to get to shore and it's crazy to see that I was able to crack the code and actually find something that worked and I was able to tap into it and, and systemize it and make it rep replicatable so that you guys could go out there do the same as well, right? Once I learned these valuable e-commerce and business skills, I've now realized since then that they are transferable. These skills are transferable and I now hold these valuable skills for the rest of my life. And the same is true for you. Once you crack the code for yourself and learn from everything that I'm giving you, and I'm going to continue to give you over these next months and years, as you become, you know, even more of a, a valuable part of our community as well, you are inherently set for life, right? You have an insanely superior advantage in life compared to all the others out there who will never learn what I've taught you and what you're learning for yourself through this process, right? Having created an exciting and powered community of aspiring entrepreneurs and current you know, entrepreneurs who all want to level up, my program has been able to take anyone and give them the shortcut to success in online income like ways, right? Just like you've read in this brief summary or listened to in this brief summary of my e-commerce journey and some of the critical turning points, I've gone through this process the hard way. I've learned the mistakes and I've figured out what works and what doesn't, right? So how do you go out there and benefit from my journey and what I've personally learned? I'm wanting to give you everything that you need to succeed more in 2022 handed to you on a silver platter. I want to give you the keys to the kingdom. I love the fact that only a few of you have probably listened an hour and a half to get to this point. It shows commitment. And again, pat yourself on the back because you've just come through. You just learned this crazy whirlwind of a journey that went from me having this vision, this vision of what I could achieve and having no idea how to do it, but just figuring it out day by day, going through all the bullshit, getting debt collectors chasing me for money that I owed in high school, getting bullied for trying to have this business and, and making money and then having it all go to shit for months and months because I couldn't pay these bills and I had to work my ass off and, and do something that I was really disliking at the time just to basically take that money and throw it into a fire pit to try and fuel this dream and then just keep you know I kept going all in and kept doing the last attempt and kept doing the last attempt until one time I did that final ditch attempt and something worked and from that day forward my life has not been the same so I'm, it gives me goosebumps again saying that like the, that one thing I was genuinely just about to throw in the towel, like I was 24 hours away from being like, nup, I'm going to go get a job in marketing or something and just work a nine to five. I was so ridiculously close to giving up and the universe said, here's $7,000 that week, here's $28,000. Then boom, here's six figures, here's multi six figures, here's millions of dollars. Years later, they've, I've become a millionaire and I was just about to throw in the towel. And it just, it's crazy to see what happens when you actually persevere so i just wanted to you know give you guys the raw deal of how that kind of journey went because a lot of the time people think that it comes quickly and easily it's anything but but that's why i'm doing this i want to give you guys the easiest process that i can physically give you when it comes to building a successful business it's not going to be plug and play it's not going to be oh turn on ads instantly become rich it's not like that and I don't want you to have the expectations of that because that's just not realistic. And anyone who says that's realistic is an idiot. Um, it will take hustle. It will take hard work. That's why you've only been accepted into this program. And I only want to work with people who are willing to put in the hard work. And that's an act actual like prerequisite is that you are going to commit time and effort into doing this. Otherwise, I wouldn't let you into this, right? So from here, I just wanted to let you know that I'm proud of you and I wanted to let you know that with less than a week to go before the official launch of the Six Figure Brand Accelerator version three program for 2022, the fact that you've actually sat here and listened to this and understood you know, what it really takes to succeed online, you're part of that top 1% already. So a massive round of applause for you. This new program, this version three program will give you literally everything that you need to start and grow your own e-commerce business in 2022 without any BS, headaches and stress that we've had to endure in the past, right? I've been working harder than ever to innovate and refine our processes to ensure that you have the undeniable ability to generate an income online. Remember, only a limited number of you will be able to actually go out there and get the discounted upgrade offer for V3 on Thursday night. And that's due to the fact that I'm raffling off an insane giveaway prize. That's right. Again, I'm indeed giving away one of my stores that's made six figures in net profits and almost half a million dollars in sales to one of you legends. You'll be able to uh, basically take what you learn inside this new V3 program that you're going to get access to, and you can apply it to this already profitable business that's making sales, right? You'll literally be able to tap in and scale that if you wish, or you can, you know, get a cash prize, whatever it is. But 
My bet is that you want to take what you learn in V3 and apply it to this business if you're one of the lucky people who obviously upgrades and then the lucky person who wins the main prize, which is this crazy store. Again, my goal is simple. It's to give you every edge possible to help you achieve your goals. I've never been as confident in myself, my skills, my processes, and my teaching ability as of right now. You are going to have everything you've ever wanted in this life. You've just got to claim it internally before it's made your external reality. All right. Now, the biggest lesson to take away from my journey so far is this. Believe you can and you are halfway there. Let me say that again. Believe you can and you are halfway there. Notice how that was a pretty consistent theme throughout my story. Without that self-belief, that unwavering desire for more, I'd have nothing. I believed that I could. I believed that there was a time where I could make it work somehow. I wasn't sure when it was going to be. I wasn't sure what I'd have to do to make it work and become successful. But I believed that I could and I knew that if others had done it in the past, so could I. So I cut the shit. I cut the excuses. I cut the limiting beliefs and I committed to my goals and let nothing get in the way, right? Years later, again, I've made millions of dollars online and I have people in my network and circle now that I never thought I'd have the chance to become amazingly like close with, right? I can do what I want when I want with who I want and it feels amazing. Version three is the culmination of my years of hustle put into a recipe, a blueprint, a system. I'm putting my brain into yours effectively so you can inherently achieve what I've achieved, but ideally in a shorter time period than it took me here. Because again, you're learning from my experiences and you're shortcutting your learning curve. So I hope you enjoyed listening to this uh, rather long-winded, but also not long enough kind of story about how I got into this game. Uh, it took me a long time to put this together and kind of articulate it all in, a, in an interesting enough way. But I put this together because I thought, you know what, if I can just inspire even just one of you who's listening to this right now to push through whatever obstacle you have in your way and work extra hard this year to achieve your goals and not give up, this is well worth my time and my energy. So I want you to go out there and pause this or listen to the end of this. Set some goals for yourself right now. Put them on paper. Give yourself some smart goals. Make them realistic and hold yourself to them. In 12 months from now, I expect you to update me with the good news that you've accomplished your goals no matter what you face and I cannot wait to hear your story as well especially those of you who get into V3 and you have everything that you need to crush it right now over the next 12 months I need you to be hitting your goals that's imperative for me and I'm going to hold you accountable to that all right so I'm excited to hear your story of what you accomplish over the next 12 months. I love hearing what you guys are accomplishing up until this point as well. And heck, if it's anything like my story and you have to go through some struggles, just know it's worth it. And one day when you, you know, you're grinding, you're grinding, you're grinding, you look up and you go, hey, holy shit, you look around, I made it, I'm successful. It all makes for a better story than any, you know, going out there and having everything given to you effortlessly. People who are born with silver spoons, they don't appreciate their success and it doesn't really mean much. For those of you like me who came up from nothing, you had to work so, so hard for your success, feeling that is, is a next level like, you know, appreciation and, and, and pride, right? I swear it's the best feeling. So I can't wait to see what you guys accomplish with V3. Make sure you guys are tuned in. Launching Thursday evening, details will be on this post and in other posts inside the group as of recent. Big love to you. I really appreciate your time and I hope you enjoyed this. Found it inspiring, learned something, got a couple of strategies, whatever it is. Um, and again, yeah, be sure to check the comments of the post in the group so you guys can make sure to register to secure your spot uh, early access for V3 as that's going to be limited spots. And once they're gone, obviously the price goes up and the raffle closes off so if you're going to do it you might as well get in quick um, and that's why you sign up to the early bird discount offer so again make sure you're on that v3 is going to be crazy i'm giving away a store that's made half a million dollars already let's go we're changing the game and i'm honestly excited to keep leading the industry and um you know have the best amazing community like you guys make this this so amazing and i'm just so appreciative and proud of all of you for overcoming different things in your own lives i know um, I know everyone has different challenges in their lives, especially wherever you guys are in the world. I know some of you are in, you know, more war-torn countries and more, you know, places that are affected by natural disasters and things like that. So my feelings are with you as well. And I'm excited to see what you can achieve after you overcome these hurdles in your life as well. So big love. I'm super excited to see what you guys are going to get up to with all of this. And yeah. Also, P.S., inside version three, I'm also going to be unraveling some seriously juicy behind the scenes source as to how one of my current students and I, Eric, are currently working on our most ambitious private label brand yet. Uh, now that I've moved on from the timepiece niche, I've stopped, you know, doing Elmore Lewis. I lost passion and drive for it after years doing it. It was way too saturated. The like simple minimalistic watches. Everyone was doing it. People started copying me left, right and center. Even other, these quote unquote e-commerce guru people, they started trying to like rip my, rip my brand off as well, which is crazy. So I got out of that space 
now are running up in a different niche as well. So we've moved on to more lucrative opportunities in different niches as well. Um, but yeah, we're going to be crushing it and uh, I'm going to be going into a really popping niche to take over the game first in Australia and then the world. So keep an eye out. We've already invested heavily in stock and research and development and marketing and things for this brand to get it up and going and it's all going to be revealed soon. I can't wait to show you guys and tease you guys in V3, show you how we're doing all the packaging, all the luxury stuff for it. Um, and yeah, I'm just super fired up and passionate about what we're all going to achieve together over the remainder of 2022. So we're going to have a big Q4 at the end of this year, guys. But hope you enjoyed. Um, big love and have an amazing day. To commit to some goals and I look forward to seeing you in V3 on the launch. Make sure you're ready and um, yeah, keep in touch. Big love from your friend, Eli. Let's go.